being here, and I uh, hope that you'll find a couple things that you find interesting or useful or valuable during the, the next 60 minutes. And we've already talked about who I am. Um, you know, I've lived in England, Germany, and uh, the United States, and now I live in Seattle. And we've talked about my book. Another book that I've contributed a chapter to that just came out is called A Guide to Open Innovation and Crowdsourcing. It has over 30 contributing authors. Uh, sort of a survey book on the, on the two topics. A lot of people know me from Twitter. Some people know me from starting this thing called Blogging Innovation. But it's now become innovationexcellence.com. And it's home to more than 3,350 articles now uh, this morning uh, from over 150 contributing authors all around the world and also it received visitors from over 180 countries around the world. So it's probably the world's most popular innovation site and we're continuing to expand and deepen uh, the content on the site to include things like presentations and videos and white papers and case studies and I mean, we have a directory on the site of service providers and we also have uh, or are going to have in the future a marketplace for things that people want to share but don't necessarily want to give away for free. Uh, and so it's something that will continue to grow and, and continue to evolve over time. Um, but it's, it's something that, that I started because really I'm pas very passionate about innovation and even before I knew that that's what it was. And uh, so when it comes to, to innovation, one of the things that makes me passionate about it is I really believe that through innovation and organizations <coughs> focusing on innovation that we can eliminate some of the waste of natural resources and human resources in our organizations from not making products and services that people don't use and that end up in the landfill. Uh, so every morning that's one of the things that pulls me out of the bed at 5 a.m. every morning to, to keep the site operating and, and to do all the other things that I do like speaking and consulting as well. Uh, but don't worry, I'm not here uh, to stay. Uh, they did get me a return ticket, so we'll be going back home. So let's just go ahead and jump right in and, and, and start a fire, or keep the fire burning. I mean, part of the reason I called the book Stoking Your Innovation Bonfire is because people had to innovate to start their company and make it successful. But the, the key is to keep it innovative and to keep it innovating over a sustained period of time. So first question I'd like to ask is, you know, really, what does an innovator look like? You know, does it look like this guy? Or does it look like her? Or does it look like him? Or does it look like, you know, this guy? Um, no, he's not a pirate. This is the very famous Chuk Chuhuli, a very famous glass artist uh, from Seattle. And you know, he creates amazingly beautiful things. And, and these things don't necessarily have a defined function that you might expect or a, a defined shape that you might expect. And innovation is very much like that. You don't necessarily know ahead of time what you're going to get, what it's going to look like, the purpose that it's going to serve. Um, but when you have a great idea that you think will create value for people and, and add value for society, then sometimes you just have to follow it and see where it takes you.